Hello Matrix and welcome to the ninth of 10 videos for Grade 12 Functions brought to you by the Answer Series. This ninth video looks at a number of exam questions. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to try example number one and then we'll do it together. Question 1.1 asks you to determine the equation of g of x. Now they've given you a point and the y-intercept. The coordinates of the y-intercept, it's 0, 1. So I use the equation that the gradient is y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2, substitute those two points in, and I get the gradient. I know that that's the y-intercept, so I get the equation of g of x. 1.2 asks you to calculate the x-coordinates at a and b. a and b are the two x-intercepts. How do I find the x-intercepts of a graph? I make y equal to 0, and I get my two values of x. 1.3 asks you to determine the range of f of x. Now that's the maximum value I can get with f of x, so I need to calculate the turning point. I use x equals minus b over 2a. I then substitute the value I get into the equation. So I get that the turning point is minus 1, 4. So my range is y less than or equal to 4. 1.4, I ask you to write down the coordinates of the turning point of f of x plus 1 minus 3. Now, that moves my graph one unit to the left, and that moves it three units down. So what happens to my turning point? It was minus 1, 4. I go one to the left, three down. So one to the left is minus 2. 3 down is 1, so my turning point becomes minus 2, 1. The next question asks you to determine the values of x for which f of x over g of x is greater than or equal to naught. Now remember, to get something that's positive, I need a positive divided by a positive or a negative divided by a negative. So if I take my two graphs... The parabola is positive there. The straight line is positive there. So where are they both positive? Well, they're both positive between A and B. So I get between minus 3 and 1. And we'll work out what happens at the endpoints just now. Where are they both negative? Well, the parabola is negative there. The straight line is negative there. So where are they both negative? They're both negative when x is greater than 1. Now, at minus 3, f of x is 0. 0 on the top of a fraction is fine, so I include minus 3. At 1, they are both 0, which is a problem because that means that g of x is 0 and I cannot divide by 0, so I may not include 1. Now I can write this in a different way because this says x is greater than or equal to minus 3, less than 1, or I can have x is greater than 1. In other words, basically I can have everything greater than or equal to minus 3, but I must exclude 1. 1. 1.6 says to you that the length of PQ is 10 and they ask you to find the coordinates of P. So I take the y value at p, which is my straight line, minus the y value at q, which is my parabola, and I make it equal to 10. I solve for x. Now they told you that pq was to the right of b, which means the x value is 3. P lies on the straight line, so I substitute it into the straight line, and I get that P's coordinate is 3 minus 2. 1.7 asks you to determine the equation of the tangent to the graph of F that is parallel to G. Now you know that lines that are parallel have the same gradient. So the tangent is Y equals minus X plus C. The two graphs 
are touching each other, so I make the two equations equal and I get it into standard form. Now, a quadratic equation has two solutions. However, because it's a tangent, there's only one solution. How do I get one solution to a quadratic? Well, delta must be equal to zero. Delta is b squared minus 4ac. So I substitute in, I solve, and I get the equation of the tangent to the parabola. Example number two. I've given you two graphs and I've asked you questions on them. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this and then we'll do it together. f of x is a hyperbola. Asymptote at y equals 0 and x equals minus 1. And a y-intercept at 1. g of x is an exponential. Asymptote at y equals minus 1 and it passes through the origin. So that's 2.1. Now, 2.2 says to you how many real solutions are there to this equation. Now, they haven't asked you to solve for x. They simply say to you how many solutions are there. Now, you notice the following. If I take the x plus 1 across to the other side and I divide, I get the 2 to the x minus 1 is equal to 1 over x plus 1. Now, why did I do that? Well, you'll notice 2 to the x minus 1 is my exponential graph, and 1 over x plus 1 is my hyperbola. So what am I actually saying to you is how many times do the exponential and the hyperbola graphs cut each other. And if I have a look at the picture, they cut there and there. So how many times do they cut? Twice. So how many solutions are there? Two. Okay, example three. Now, you have a look at it. And there's a sigma notation in functions. How does that work? Because sigma comes into series. But what you've got to remember is that 15% of all your exams are problem-solving questions. Now, problem-solving questions don't have to be difficult. Problem-solving questions just mean that they are unseen. So you've got to take the work that you've been taught and you need to think and see how can I adapt what I've been taught into an unseen problem. Now, don't be scared of this question. You know how to do sigma notation. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this and then we'll do it together. Okay, so the first thing I do is I start with k is minus 2 and I get minus 2x plus 1. And then my next term is minus x plus 1 and I go all the way up to 4 at the end, so to 4x plus 1. So I've written the series out in full. If I collect together like terms, I get that y is equal to 7x plus 7. So this sigma notation that I asked you to draw the graph of is exactly the same as drawing the graph of y equals 7x plus 7. That's a straight line graph. Y-intercept is 7. X-intercept is minus 1. And that's it. Now that wasn't so bad. So problem solving questions, you need to just have courage. You need to think. And they're not all impossible. You should now feel more confident with answering exam questions. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.